Hi everyone, this is Lou Martin and I'm a conscious <laughs> channel and I'm here with my new friend and fellow colleague, uh, the wonderful, uh, another American expat living in Europe, uh, Karen Newman. Thank you. I wonder right. if we're expats or refugees. I'm not sure which one. Yes, all the above <laughs> probably, right? Yeah. Cosmic yeah. wanderers. Yeah. There's a lot of us over here. If you say so. I haven't met too many in Ireland, honestly. Oh, maybe not Ireland, but in the Netherlands, there's quite some people, yeah. Really? A lot of Americans? Yeah, and uh, just a quick funny story. There's like one person that I've known my whole life. Um, she and I went to elementary school together. We went to... Uh, Sorry. Oh, no that, problem. That... We went to high school together. We ended up going to college together. Right. We lived together in New York City after college, and now she's actually living in the Netherlands. So she and I have this life... It goes like this, yeah. Great, great. Sorry, that was uh, that was my phone ringing there. Mm. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Mm -hmm. um, brilliant. So, Karen, you know, mm -hmm. you were good enough to invite me to um, to be on your great show there a couple weeks ago, and uh, I got to do a, a, a real marathon uh, two hour channeling session, ninety mm -hmm. minutes channeling, thirty minutes interview, and then you did the same thing last week. So. Yeah. I, I want to give you whatever space you want to uh, have here to tell your story. And so my little group can, uh, can learn about you and your great work. Well, thank you. Um, it's not actually my show, though. I'm now running it. It's the Human Colony Saturday webinar that is every week. And it, Human Colony started about, uh, I guess, seven or eight years ago now. Maybe yes. that's too far back. I'm not sure exactly when they started. Right. Um, but uh, for the last couple of years, I've been involved with them. And uh, they were one of the first people to sort of give me a regular platform for my channeling. Great. Um, I had uh, had a radio show at that point, And, you know, I came in. They were doing a lot of what they call galactic language gyms. And people would come in and speak their galactic language. And at that time, uh, the channel Roxanne Swainhart was quite involved in Hukalo. And I was on the same radio network with Roxy. And so she kind of brought me over and I went in and out, but I just sort of stayed around through their many uh, growths and expansions. But the uh, Hukalo uh, organization, if I can call it that, it's sure. quite small, yeah. is, is built around Jim Charles, who is a channel. And right. he and Max Rempel came together because Jim started channeling when he was doing Reiki treatments on Max. Okay. And that's how it started. And it just sort of has evolved and grown. And um, in the last, uh, the last two years, I've been hosting most of the webinars on Saturday if I wasn't channeling. And mm -hmm. now I've taken over the sort of booking and the direction of, of what we're going to do. And so you were uh, a channel that I just felt drawn to. And uh, without knowing you or actually having seen you, but having seen you, and I thought, okay, I just heard ask him and it just turned out to be a wonderful exchange and people are still talking about it so that's a very good good sign that it well, was thank you loss. thank you so much it, yeah. it was answered prayer for me and uh honestly uh i'm i'm so delighted to get to know you i i, I truly yeah. mean that from my heart to yours and thank you've you. done you've done so much uh work and training and you've just come back from india so yeah. you know can you can you tell people a little bit about how how you have evolved into this bright light that you are. Oh, thank you. Um, well, thank you for that. Sure. Well, I, I, I talk about it a lot, and um, but my whole life has always been about wanting to know God or the divine or whatever you want to call it in any kind of sense or understanding. And it's been that lifelong pursuit. And that has been primary for everything. And, you know, whereas I was, you know, I, I had become an actress and a singer, that never sort of uh, overcame my desire for God. So, you know, whereas a lot of people would be really out doing, practicing their craft, my thing would be I'd be locked in my room reading books and books and praying and, you know, attending, you know, any kind of uh, thing that I could that, I thought would give me what I wanted and, and that information. And I had also started to have a communication um, with God uh, when I was a very little girl. And um, I've said it before, but I'm not sure 
because my memory, you know, your memory from five years old is, is it's uh, lacking, yeah. at least mine is. But yeah. I had a near the death experience. Really? Yes, I died in a pool. Wow. Um, I was at a pool party. I was, uh, we had a, I was a little ballet dancer and we had a pool party for all the dancers on someone's birthday. And I was swimming along and there was a little girl who couldn't swim. So she was sort of holding on to the side of the pool and kicking and playing. And at one moment she pushed away from the side and then pushed away so far she couldn't get back. And instead of, you know, being able to swim back, she grabbed a hold of me. And then it became this sort of her trying to stay above water and pushing me down, down. on purpose. Yeah. So I eventually, I re- what I remember is I remember the struggle of not understanding why I couldn't get out of the water, why, yeah. why I was. And then I just remember this letting go feeling. Right. Um, I think I remember sinking to the bottom of the pool. Yeah. But I'm not sure if that's true or if that's yeah fill in memory. But I do remember all of a sudden, it was like a whoosh. It was like, or a whoosh or something like that. And then all of a sudden I was standing in this all white place. It was white walls and white floors and there was no sense of a floor or any place, but I was sort of standing within this whiteness. Wow. And I just had this sense of this music being very, Oh, I right. right. um, there's a song called, um, there's a song that I'll look up the name of it that has that sound to it. And I actually remember uh, hearing an interview by the woman who wrote a Johnny Morani. She wrote something about oh, dying. Uh, yeah, Anita Morjani. Uh, Thank you very much. Yes. She mentioned that song. No, did she mention it? I don't remember. It was someone from Australia that also had a near-death experience. And they mentioned this song and they said when they heard it and they had died as well, they just had tears start down their face because it was exactly what they heard. And I went and found it. It's called Angels of Comfort. It's okay. an amazing. It was okay. by Latsu. Okay. And I heard it and it, it is. It's exactly like that. Right. It just right. takes you there. Right. And so I had that experience, but it, it seemed to be very brief. Um, I was sort of standing there with this question of why and who and what's happening. And then the next thing I was choking up water on the pool. Right. But I was left with this desire to know God. Sure. Sure. And and that became my theme of my life. Sure. And, And I was very vocal about wanting to know God. Yeah. You know, so much so that people would say, you can't talk to God. There's, you know, there's no way God is in the Bible and, and, you know, he doesn't talk to people and he talked to the people before, but that doesn't happen anymore. And, and so I would walk around and I was just, I felt like I had, like if I was insistent enough. Sure. (laughs) <laughs> I would get somewhere because yeah. I knew it worked on my parents, you know, yeah. <laughs> and I just, you know, and I was quite logical as a kid and I, I sort of would just sit down and I would state my case to the air yeah. about why I should be able to talk to God. Good for you. And I pointed yeah. out all the reasons like, well, if you can create the world and you can do all these things and you yeah. can hear your prayers, why can't you talk back? And why won't you talk back? And I don't think it's fair. Well, I, Clearly, you won your argument, my friend. <laughs> I did. So there was a time where I was at my grandmother's and uh, I was walking. She lived in the, in the mountains in Maryland and I was walking along railroad tracks and I was again, you know, it was when I would have my alone times that I would really just, you know, for lack of, of anything else to do, I guess I was, you know, I was going back at God, like, come on, come on. Yeah. And then all of a sudden when I was walking on the railroad tracks and I just remember standing there. And I used to pick up coal because it was an old coal mining town. I used to you know, pick up coal from the railroad tracks. Yeah. And uh, I just heard, we're here and we love you. Beautiful. Yeah. And I, then I was suspicious. <laughs> How old were you when that happened? I was around five. So that's what really? I'm saying. It all happened at the same time. That's amazing. Yeah. And like I said, I'm not sure what came first, the drowning, but I have to think now it was the drowning. Sure. Sure. Um, and uh, 
I will say like psychic phenomena and things are not new into my family, especially on my mother's side. Um, they have a lot of stuff, but it wasn't like anybody was afraid of it or scared of it. They just took it for granted that that right. was just stuff that right. happened. And right. it wasn't really focused on at all. Right. It was no big deal. No, yeah. And they, it wasn't really talked about, but it wasn't ignored either. Okay. Um, okay. And, and I, and I, I remember, you know, I thought about had I had any exposure to channeling or anything, and I didn't think so, but I will tell you about a, two years ago when I went home to my mom's house, I was looking through some books because we've got an amazing collection of books. And I realized that we had every book from Seth. Wow. I didn't wow. know that. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. Um, so somewhere it got in. Sure. So when I started my conversation, it was really just me asking a lot of questions. Why this? Why that? Why is this like this? You know, and they were teach me. They were teaching me all kinds of principles. And so you, you started having a dialogue with, with God. From the very first moment. I also started spontaneously writing poems. Right. Um, Great. I write long, uh, just stories. Right. Um, a lot of poems that were, you know, downloaded within seconds or minutes. Sure. I would write them. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I don't talk about too much, but it's still true. It still happens. Right. I, I because you know Christians get a hold of you, and the first thing they say to you is, "Make sure it's not the devil." Well, are <laughs> we moving away from that madness, my friend? <laughs> but that's what they told me, you know, as this little child, and that scared the crap out of me, you know. Sure. And I and I. Good for uh, that. Huh. It's, it, do, it does that very well. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was afraid. I was, but I knew that it wasn't because I didn't think the devil would say they lo it loved you. You know, that didn't make sense to me. Yes. Thank and God. Yeah. So I said, you know, how do I know it's really you and not some kind of monster or not God or whatever? So they showed me a dove that, that I could see with my eyes. And, and they said, a dove you will see when you speak to me. Great. So now I see it with my eyes open and I see it with my eyes closed. And wow. it's just a little, like a little white dove. And, and I see it and I've seen it ever since then. And I still see it wow. um, when they want my attention, uh, when something really beautiful is happening and there's like a beautiful truth moment, this dove appears. I've, I've seen it my whole life. Wow. So that was another gift I was given um, in that assurance. So, yeah. um, then the other, the next big thing that, that happened in that thing was I just really wanted to know what what did I what did I have to do um, with this always this idea of I wanted God you know I wanted that relationship I wanted I wanted I'd heard the verse in the Bible that said Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God you know yeah. I wanted that I wanted yeah. that yeah. Uh, and so I, I I said what do I need to do what do I need to know? And so I was told, go get your Bible. And, and this, I was older. So I was around seven or eight because I could read. Um, and I went to the closet and I got this Bible, which seemed to me at that time to be about this big and right. <laughs> really about this big. Right. And, I, and I was told to open the Bible and I looked down and I was just told to read the first thing I saw. And so I saw a verse and it said, if a man says he loves God, but hates his neighbor, he is a liar. For how can he love God that he has not seen and hate his neighbor who he has seen? Yeah, it's powerful. And then I heard, that's all you need to know. Yeah, yeah. You know, they said, always ask yourself, is this love or not love? Yes, yes. So that became my truth. That was my truth. And that is what I have walked my entire life looking at what is the source of this? Is this love or not love? Is this, you know, and so every religion and every philosophy that I've encountered, I've measured it against that. Great. You know, yeah. whereas some people will go to church and see uh, things that didn't measure up and they'd get mad at God and, or get mad and say, oh, this is all crap. I, I'd never had that. I always had, well, this is not the truth that I know. And so everything that I've approached 
I've approached it from that standpoint. And then the biggest thing was loving everyone. You know, I, I was told you, you can't just love yourself. You have to love everyone as you, as you, because they are you. And, you know, all, everything is you or everything is me was the terms they used. And so I, I've had a lifetime also of saying, okay, this person is me. How am I going to love them? How, how, where do I, not only just to the fact of like, you know, knowing you should, we're all brothers, but really finding that true, genuine connection of love for them, no matter the circumstance. Yeah. So I've spent a great deal of time trying to cultivate that. There's no greater challenge, my friend. That's the big <laughs> Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I had a lot of other experiences. I, I have... I speak with trees and I've had connections in that realm as well um, where I go to the, I had a tree when I was little that was my teacher. Um, I used to sit in the tree and the tree would talk to me and teach me as well as my guides. And so I, I've had these sort of mystical kind of experiences that were very personal and I didn't really talk about them until I started to get older because I knew instantly when I did talk about it, people didn't relate to it. And I realized that that wasn't in there, what they were busy with. Sure. And that's what I was always busy with. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, yes. I, I read some of that on your blog and it's, it's, yeah. it's a, it's a great to hear it from you personally. Um, Thank you. Can, you're very welcome. Thank you. Um, and when did Theo begin to make an appearance? In your it's Theo's. Theo, sorry. Yeah, Theos. No, um, well, what happened is I'd been talking to, to uh, God my whole life, and my definition has changed of that. Um, guides, angels, God, not God, you know, everything. And, uh, and there was a woman that had been one of my first metaphysical teachers um, when I was about 19. She had come to my college, and they were teaching a class on intro to your angels or have a aura or something like that. And so I went, and I started a sort of friendship with these two teachers that were there. And the, the guy, Michael, who was also a teacher, he was a channel then in like 1992 or something like that. No, yeah, 90, 19, when did I graduate from college? I graduated from high school, 84. So it was around 87 or something like that, that I met them. And uh, yeah, anyway, it turns out that I, this woman who I hadn't seen in so many years lives now in France. And we connected via a chat group at an Abraham Hicks right. uh, online seminar. And she saw my name and she was like, is that Karen Newman from South Carolina? And we were able to just reconnect. And then she came to my house, actually. Right. Right. And one of our conversations, and we talked a lot about everything. And she said, you know, I'm really surprised you're not a channel. And I said, oh. No, I had no intention of being a channel. This is about 2008, I guess. And I'd been listening to Esther Hicks at that point for about four or five years. And, uh, but I never had considered that that was something for me. Right. And so she said that to me and I said, well, no, that's nothing for me. And she said, well, I just feel inspired to say, maybe you should think about it. Yeah. You know? And so I, I didn't really give it much credence. Um, but then at some moment, not so long after that, Theo said, do you want to know our name? Because up in the moment, I never had a name for them. I just, they were my guides, whatever. And I was a little embarrassed because I thought, wow, I never thought of them as being an yeah. entity that yeah. had any kind of a identity. Sure. And so I said, yes, of course. Of course I do. And uh, so they said, we are Theos. And, and then they explained to me that they had picked that name for me, that that name, because of what it meant, um, that it meant God, it meant knowledge of God, it meant word of God. So that sort of ticked all the boxes of what I had been asking for. Mm -hmm. And then they explained to me that they were, you know, and, and, and the definition of, of who they are in relationship to me and who I am in relationship to them has also expanded as my knowledge of them has grown. Um, but at first, you know, they told me that they had, they had decided to work with me because of my insistence, because of my ability to know that there was something more, that, they, that, that I wasn't willing to just stay in this 
mentality. They knew that my, my awareness could expand to include that awareness. And so they reached out to me. What I understand now is, you know, I used to say they were an aspect of my higher self. But what I've learned is I am their projection into this existence. You know? Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Six of one, half a dozen of the other, isn't it? Well, it is and it isn't. I mean, yeah. it's a difference to think that, you know, that I am, that they're me, but I'm just, you know, they're part of my group with me being the center of it. Does that make sense? It's a little less egoic to understand that I am actually their projection into this world. And, and so, yeah, they, and I talk to them about where they are and, and, and they aren't anywhere, um, right. they're non-physical, but they explain that they exist within what, what they said it was the Shekinah. And the Shekinah is the divine feminine energy of God. I didn't know that though. Yeah. I didn't even know what that was. I was like, is that a star system? I, cause I wasn't sure they, you know, by this time I was starting to become aware of it. A lot of people were interested in extraterrestrials and extra dimensionals and stuff. So again, that was, had never been my bent. I had just always had my relationship with them. And so I started talking to them and, and after a little bit of these conversations, they asked me, did I want to channel and I said, well, no, I, I really, what would I say? And they said, well, it wouldn't be you talking. Yeah, I do. <laughs> so. The burden's um, off your shoulders, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they just said we would, we would like to share with other people some of the things that we've shared with you and to yeah. give them also the opportunity to, to prop their vibrations for their yeah. expansion. Yeah, beautiful. So I agreed. And uh, yeah, Great. after... A period of time I, I started channeling so brilliant brilliant so yeah. um do, do you have anything published i i don't know uh no but i'm actually writing a book right now i've, yeah. I've written two books actually yeah. but they have nothing to do with spirituality um they're on physical fitness that's for my work life um, okay and so that they wouldn't be interesting but i am working on a book right now the channeled book good good i'm glad to hear that karen Thank that's that's, yeah. that's exciting yeah brilliant brilliant well um yeah my friend i mean there's just so much here uh you know that uh you're you're sharing it's it's wonderful um what else would you like to to bring to people's attention about this time and and um, you know the role of helping uh you and i get to play and people like us to help people to awaken yeah well i think the, the biggest thing and the the biggest uh Thing that's so important to me right now is just the commitment to service and to awaken that in everyone in whatever degree that it can be and whatever anyone can offer to the world it's really important and it doesn't mean that everyone has to be a, a teacher or working on a spiritual way but you know just serving our our fellow man is is so important and my friend that i love very much this woman crystal she's She's kind of like my twin soul, but just because we seem to have the same themes in life, you know, and uh, she and I had a discussion and she said, I want to serve people. And I said, that's what I want to do too. And then we both said it sort of at the same time. We said, we want to help people that have real problems, you know, that it's really easy to serve people that don't have any issues, but to yeah. really... <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. to really go that extra mile and so that we start to really care for our fellow man. And that's one of the things about human colony that um, is now coming in, that human colony in the, the past was based on this idea of humans building a colony in the stars, you know. But I brought to the attention of human, people from human colony, they agree that we need to take care of this human colony first. Be a good idea. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, whatever, and, and Theos's message has changed now because in the past they were just answering questions, whatever they would be. But now they're really sort of trying to give people a little bit of a call to action that, you know, you will learn by your own experience. You can't see the face of God in another human until you serve them. You truly. Yeah. And so that's what they're calling for now. They're calling for the the letting go of of all of the 
uh, barriers between our true understanding of who we all are and, and this sort of embracing of our, what it sh truly should mean to be human, this, this idea that we are one and we are all deserving of all of the things that are necessary for life. You know, the basic human needs are, are so very important and that's what they're really calling for. And yeah, so that's, that's important to me now. And, and it's for each individual to find that within themselves. <laughs> I think that was an amen from the choir. Get down. Ah, maybe a skateboarder went by. Sure. Um, or maybe they're just agreeing with what I said. Yes, that's what I was saying. It's an, a it's an amen from the choir, my friend. Yeah, yeah, I have two dogs, so they were, she mean, Tom's still growling at the window. Tommy, yeah, get down. <laughs> So, yeah, so that's what, that's what the new thing is. And um, it's not really a new thing, but this is what's important now. Uh, sure. And, sure. You know, yeah. Good, good, excellent. So um, where can people find you? They can come to my website at uh, karennewman.org. They can visit me there. Okay. Uh, they can find me on Human Colony, uh, the Hukulo Saturday webinar every Saturday. I've got some events coming up in the next few weeks. If you're in the Netherlands, I'll be speaking at the Earth and Beyond conference on the 23rd of June. And then I do have an online conference coming up um, called At Home in Yourself. That'll be sometime in July, I believe. Great, great. And... Uh, there's some other things that are coming up. I've got, I also am a teacher of mantra and uh, sacred sound, and I will be doing some online mantra workshops. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because mm. uh, didn't I read that you had done like uh, a 24 hour cycle of chanting uh, in India? You'd. No, I did a, uh, I did a teacher training. All right. For Sanskrit and mantra. Right. Uh, there. In okay. India. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. So you're very grounded in, in many different uh, areas of spiritual empowerment. Yeah, well, the, yeah, the, the thing that is most, most uh, for me is the, my channeling, but, but also just the sound. The, it's called Nada Yoga, and it's okay. a sound yoga. Right. You know, most yoga, the physical, the asanas, the positions, are really designed to create the body to be still. So that when you do go to meditate, you have quieted yourself. You've released a lot of your physical blocks that allow you to be still. But the connection really comes in the, in the mantra and the meditation. And mantra in and of itself, Sanskrit, is, you know, it's a light language. It, it's, it's one of the few languages that has never been changed since its creation. And it was channeled by a group of high beings called the Rishis. And the Rishis were these great seers and they created these mantras that are really words of power that yeah. you know they usually refer to an, a deity um, in the in the mantra itself but it's because of that aspect of the creation that you are trying to tune into and when you chant the mantra you are raising your vibration and you are joining this word of power this vibrational sound so you're not only saying something you are becoming whatever it is you are saying you're joining that vibration it's very very powerful yes and yes. so it's but it, it's, it's it's a very i study specifically the vedic chanting because the pronunciation of sanskrit is so important um when you say it and a lot of people because they simply don't know yeah correct correct pronunciations they can say it very, very wrong. And intention does go very far in chanting mantra, but it's almost like tuning your radio dial very specifically. You know, the sounds themselves, because the letters of Sanskrit each also have their own meaning mm -hmm. and their own depth, that when you're saying something, you have this full sort of multidimensional uh, contact with these vibrations, and it's very powerful. So the pronunciation... And the refinement of that is so very important. And so that's what I'm teaching because it makes such a difference than if you say Krishna or Krishna. 
It's such a different word. And sometimes if you're saying the word incorrectly, you're saying a really completely different thing that you don't really want to be saying. Like, you know, a thing that you use to count is called a a mala, which is with all the beads. A lot of people will say mala, and that's incorrect. Mala means um, what you do when you go number two in the bathroom. Oh. (laughs) You know, things like that. And it can be that specific. You really want to have that refinement. It's also the respect of the tradition itself to, to take the time to invest in understanding the powerful vibration of the, the word. And one of the things that I like so much about it and one of the th- reasons that I, and I'd heard forever, learn Sanskrit, learn Sanskrit, learn Sanskrit, um, is because it's one thing to talk a lot and, and have beautiful discourses with people, but if they're not actually using the tools that they have at their disposal to have their contact, they never make any kind of transformation. It's all hearsay. And, and the contact and the connection that we should be seeking is this deep connection with ourselves because that's where all the change is. That's where all of our power is. That's where all of our knowing is. And we all have access to that. We come equipped to utilize it, to contact it, it's just sometimes it's the last thing people think of doing. You know, they go to everybody else and keep asking the same questions, keep going to everyone else, but truly they should be retreating within themselves. And so that's also more the message, but also to give people the real tools to, to experience it. Because if you, the first time you touch it, it's life changing. I, I had colleagues in my classes and there was a woman who had been doing mantra for 35 years and she said until she got the Sanskrit pronunciation right she said it was like chanting affirmations with the hope that they would work but as once she started to really lock into it she said it was like a black and white world became technicolor for her Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you just would see people have amazing transformations just based on a sound a tone Mm-hmm. And the thing with the sound is it really cuts right through everything. You don't, mm-hmm. It doesn't matter the story that people have. It doesn't matter your past or your future. Mm-hmm. It's only about the sound and the connection that you are making. And it, it, it's a beautiful thing to witness and see and to experience. So. Yeah, I believe that deeply. Uh, you're teaching me a lot here right now, which is, which is really wonderful. You. Um, uh, you know, I, I know, I mean, I, I sing and play and, and, and write music, uh, you know, you had your ukulele out a minute ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know that there's nothing like if I'm in a group and I need people to get centered, we just ohm and immediately the, the group becomes centered. Because the ohm is who we are. There's a beautiful, uh, uh Swami Vikananda, who was one of the great teachers. He wrote a book called Om is your real name. That that is who we are. All of the energy of the entire universe is encompassed in this ohm that I have. To, so I don't. I tattooed my arm, my name on my arm, so I wouldn't forget it. Good. The yeah. Ohm is, the yeah. ohm is who we are, and so when you, what I was saying earlier, when you chant a vibrational sound like ohm, ohm being, you know, they they there's even the the Mandukya Upanishad, which is one of the Vedic teachings that says you can reach enlightenment just by chanting ohm. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, Upanishad. And I base a lot of my teaching on that. And that was a lot of what Theos had said to me. In and it goes all into the nature of reality. And when I found that Upanishad, that's when I really knew that what I was getting from Theos was so steeped in the Vedas without ever having encountered them, but it was steeped in that truth. But the Om itself is so very powerful that you are not just chanting a word, you are expressing the very essence of who you are. Right. So that's why it centers people just so quickly because you just come right back to yourself. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. When I, when I was uh, proposing a sound class, a uh, sound workshop to a group of people who run a seminar here, there was a guy who was very, he was great because he said, you know, very heady guy, very intellectual. And he said, you know, I'm very, you know, He's very Dutch, and he said, I'm very uh, skeptical because, you know, what am I going to do with, you know, anything? And I, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to sit and meditate. And he said, so what can you show me right now that will show me that this works? 
you know, and, and the, the idea of something that works is so subjective. What does it mean that it works? Well, I know that you will feel something, you know. And yeah. so we sat there in a restaurant, in an Italian restaurant on the beach. Luckily, we're in the back. And I said, well, okay, just, you know, take, and I, and I got him to sit in a correct way and take a deep breath. And there was four of us at the table, and we all four did these beautiful, just three perfect, I always say just three perfect ohms. And then we just sat there for about 10 minutes in perfect silence. Wow. Yeah. And he was like, okay, what do you want to do? We'll do anything you want. You know, just that one experience for him because it took him to his own place, yeah. to his own knowing. And I didn't have to say or teach anything. You don't have to talk too much. I'm talking a lot right now. But if you can get someone to access their own knowing, you've done everything for them then. Yeah. And it all yeah. for them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, you know, I, I deeply relate. I, it's uh, getting out of the head, opening the heart and aligning yeah. to our true spirit. And then people feel that deep sense of peace and oneness again. And they go, yeah. oh, this is wonderful. Yeah. 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 And it's non-dogmatic. It doesn't have to be anything about anything. You know, and a lot of people shut down as soon as you mention anything, you know. But if you just let them experience that. That's right. They, they come to their own conclusions and their own, you know, and that's yeah. really what it is. And I think in the beginning, when I first started talking with people, I always thought, how do I, you know, it's a very common thing in the beginning. You always think, okay, how am I going to change people's minds? But I don't need to do any of that. You know, I only need to teach them the tools yeah, that's to, right. to, to find their own truth. And, and that's more important than anything. Yeah. That is, that's everything, my friend. Absolutely. Yeah. You yeah. know, uh, you give them their own experience. They don't, they don't have to debate what's real and what's true. No, they just know and they go on their own journey and it just opens up and it's beautiful to see. And, and that's why, you know, everybody doesn't need to be the teacher, but everyone does need to be in touch with their own knowing. And everyone, if, if the whole world, you know, could access that, we would fix everything too sweet. There would be not a lot of debate. Yes. It's well, and I, I really, much logical stuff. Yeah. yeah I, I feel uh, that sound and toning and chanting will play a, a bigger and bigger role because of what we're saying here that you don't have to debate anything. You just need to give yourself permission to have that experience. Yeah. Come back to, to the truth of who you are. Yeah. And exactly. it, it shifts the vibration in the field, obviously. Yeah. 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 So that, and you know, sound can be the, 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 the biggest sound is silence, you know, that's also, that is the, that is the master sound. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I like all of the sort of philosophical ideas about it. And I like to have the big heady discussions because that's my personal interest, but it's not for everybody, um, you know, but, uh, but the truth is, is what they can personally experience. Well, Gurdjieff said, it's like a finger pointing at the moon. And, you know, uh, uh, until you have the experience, everything is a metaphor. Yeah, exactly. Everything is then. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the song. It's like when you fall in love and you suddenly understand what everyone's talking about on the radio. That's right. It's just That's the right. same thing. You yeah. suddenly get it. You suddenly yeah. open up. And, you know, if anyone's watching that is, is wondering, like, what is a really good way to open up? I think studying Reiki is a huge way for people to open up. For a lot of people, it's their sort of first awareness. But if you start to meditate, a lot of people start to meditate and boom, they start having all these sort of psychic experiences and, you know, they, all this stuff starts happening for them. And, and you don't have to, it, it's just because I always said that, I always got the information that any kind of psychic development is, is a side effect of awakening. Right, it's not the point. It's not the point, but it becomes a side effect. And what we've had in society is people that come in awake, they get a little bit sidetracked being focused on being a psychic or a medium or even a channel, you know. I don't think the channeling is important. I think it's, because uh, for me, it's about my connection. And, and that's what I only want, you know. I always said to my mom, I want a God job. How do you get one of those, you know? <laughs> How do you become a God job? Yeah. Yeah. Well yeah, so, but everyone well. has their own desire in that way. 
Yeah, well, it's what you said earlier, Karen, about being of service to each other, you know, and, and getting out of our own way and not making it about the differences, but about what we all have in common, that we, we are all hungry and thirsty after wisdom and knowledge, which really is our connection to love. Yeah. I had a, I watched today, I was busy doing some work and when I'm working on the computer, I tend to watch, I, I've loved talk radio since I was a little kid. I've always liked it and I like listening to conversations and that, that girl Malalia, do you know the, the Muslim girl that was shot in the head and now she's yes. so great. Yes, I, I listened to her and I cried through the whole conversation, not because of what happened to her, but because of at such a young age, she is such a light in this world. Yeah. And she's so, the reason she was shot was because she was advocating for education for the, for girls and yes. for all people. And, yes. and I just thought, you know, there's so many lights of people in this world that just haven't turned on yet, you know, and, and if, if, if my service, I hope will be just to teach people to turn their own light on. Sure. Because we don't know the talent, you know, that people have that they can offer, that they can use to, to make this world better. And there's so many people, and, you know, I'm not 20 anymore, and I'm not old, but I'm not the youngest person. And I know there's, this is the other big thing that I'd like to share. Um, it became very evident to me several years ago that life wasn't about me. <laughs> It was about my part of life, my part in the, the, the world. And that I knew that the ripple that I can put out, you know, was the most important thing. And that right. I, I started to, I always got the, Theos always talked about the Great Wall of China. They always said that the person that conceived the wall never saw it built, you know. The person that designed it never got to experience it, but that first inkling of that desire to make it was important. And, and I know that that's true for all of us. And I see these amazing kids now coming in and you know, they're the future. These kids like that David Hogg, you know, that's advocating against gun violence and this young girl and, you know, many, many young people who are just, coming in and they only just need to be given the opportunity of the support of everyone around them. So the parents that see their children that are already ready to, to come in, they only have to be nurtured and there's no more important of a job, you know? And yeah. so I, I, that's, that's the commitment of the service I have the, the, that let's help people turn their lights on so that they can, turn more people's lights on and, and that we can really change our world in that way. Yes. Shine your light and share your love is how my guides say it. Yeah. Yeah. I see when I, when I envision the world, I see points of light everywhere on like on a map. Yeah. And I see more and more of them flickering on and yeah. them growing brighter. And, yeah. and so whatever I can do to, to help that is I'm happy to do it. Brilliant. Well, you're, yeah. you're doing quite a job, my friend. It's, it's great Thank to you. connect with you. Thank do you, you. Do we want to give Theos a, a chance to give us a message before we finish up here today? Is that oh, sure. Yeah, let me have a sip of water. <laughs> do. Take a, take a oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Okay. Yeah, uh, truly, again, it's just it's wonderful to connect with you. And, uh, Thank you. Um, I, I will say that in the last few years, my channeling has changed. I, I started off, you know, channeling and... The, my eyes closed and then my eyes opened. And then there was one moment where they just said, we're very integrated now. And so in my channeling, what started to happen is I really go back and forth between myself and them, but I still have to go get them sure. <laughs> from the very sure. beginning. I, I know how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So I don't know if that's the same for you, but. Yeah, I just take a few deep breaths, but I know the energy because I've yeah. worked with it many times, but yeah. I know it's not me. You know, it's something else. Well, know? it is you, I think. Yeah. yeah. It's, but it's the part of you, it's the part of me that doesn't have any of the, the stuff, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. higher self works in my mind, you know. That's, yeah. that's it's a lovely yeah. paradox. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be great if you wouldn't mind to share a message here sure. with us. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 
There's always a moment where I gotta let the <laughs> tension yeah. on it all go. Yeah. 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 We are Dios, and we are so extremely pleased and honored to be welcome on to this platform to speak with you. Thank you. And we know what you are seeking as far as a message, and we would like to address our message really to humanity, but also to you, Lou, in encouragement for your mission to know that you are outreach is making beautiful waves in the universe so for that we we thank you thank you to everyone else that is watching we we heard from karen as she spoke a little bit eloquently about the idea of service and we say that because our desire is to awaken within you a wish for the world to be what we all envision it to be, what we know it is, its true nature. Not only does the soul have a true nature, but so does the world. And we only need to reveal what's already there. The hate that is moving around is only covering up the love that is truly there. So you don't remove hate by any kind of violence or screaming or yelling, but you remove it by remembering and then walking in it. You remove fear by providing safety. You remove hunger by providing food. You remove ignorance by providing knowledge. And every one of you has the ability to contribute in some way to this world, to fill the basic needs of people so that their further wantings can go to all the things like spirituality and making this world better. But until we take care of each other, until we make sure that we are all equal, it's a very hard fight. And we don't even want to use the word fight. We will just say it's a very frustrating endeavor. We encourage you to notice that you're only as good as the best part of you. You're only as weak as the weakest part of you. But notice the difference between the weakness and the strength. Notice the difference between the rich and the poor until that gap is closed. And it's easily closed. There's never going to be the better world we're seeking. We have great hope for you, however. We're not saying that it won't happen. We're only just trying to make you understand that action is necessary at this time. It's great to create with your mind. It's very nice to deliver food to the poor. It's very helpful to think of others first, because you can only see the face of God in another. So we encourage you to open your eyes and really look and really see and experience the divine in yourself, but also in the other. So that's really our message for you. Great. Thank and you. we wish to just express our love and once again, our gratitude. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Thank you.
Thank you. Beautiful. Thanks, my friend. That'll do it. Okay. Peace and blessings, my dear. We'll talk. Peace again. and blessings. Okay. Thank Namaste. you. Namaste. Okay.